Good afternoon, everyone. It's 12 noon on August the 19th, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you to everyone who's able to join us today for the Maine Department of Education Assessment Team Lunch and Learn Office Hour, the first of the 24-25 school year. It's great to be here with you today. Um, for those of you who may be new to our office hours um, or those of you who may have forgotten, typically we ask that you will post your questions here in the chat as we move through the presentation. There will be time and space for questions at the end of the session. We will also be recording the questions into a written resource um, along with the responses from the team, and those will be later posted to our assessment team webpage. So we can move to the next slide. And we'll just start off with some brief introductions for those of you who we have not had the opportunity to connect with before. My name is Jody Bossio Smith, and I'm currently serving as the Director of Assessment for the Maine Department of Education. And I will pass it along to one of our newer team members, Michelle. Hi, good afternoon. I'm Michelle Ganglefinger. I am new to the Department of Ed. I am, my role is the MSAA alternate and assessment coordinator as, long, as well as the English language proficiency assessment coordinator. And I will turn it over to Dr. Regina Lewis. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to a new year. And we're looking forward to supporting you throughout this year. I'm Regina Lewis, affectionately known to this team as Dr. G, and I am the coordinator of the National and International Assessments, and I will pass it on to Krista. Hi, everyone. I'm Krista Averill. I'm the assessment coordinator for the general assessments, which would be the main three-year assessment in reading and math, as well as the main science assessment. Leah is not here with us today, so I'm going to pass it on to Daniela. Hi, my name is Daniela Crone, and I'm the office specialist for the assessment team. So here's a broad overview of today's agenda. We have some general updates across the main educational assessments and by main educational assessments or MEA, we are referring to ELP assessments and alternate assessments, as well as our general assessments in reading, math, and science. Um, and we're going to move through each of those um, throughout our time here together today. Next slide, please, Daniela. As a reminder, the mission and vision of the Maine Department of Education is to promote best learning opportunities for all Maine students by providing information, guidance, and support to all Maine schools and educators, also in providing adequate and equitable school funding and resources. Next slide, thank you, Daniela. And in keeping with this mission of the department, technical assistance across our main assessments is available to any main SAU or school. We do already have some schools that we've connected with over the summer or at the main DOE Educator Summit, which took place a couple of weeks ago, who have reached out with focused requests for technical assistance related to the assessments. The form for technical assistance is linked here, um, and it was always also provided in the slides emailed to you earlier this morning by Krista. Also, as a reminder, the administration windows for all MEAs are available now on our assessment team webpage. So you can go there to look and see when each of the administration windows are taking place. Um, we also provided um, printed handouts of this calendar when we were at the main educator summit. So if you are interested in having a standalone PDF of this schedule, please don't hesitate to reach out to one of our coordinators and we can provide that. Next slide, please. Perfect. So our state Department of Education is working on having its own data lake, um, which will be the warehouse for school and SAU level data, including assessment results data. This work is currently in progress. As a reminder, if you are looking for the suppressed data for the 2021 or 22-23 school year, that can be currently accessed in the publicly available ESSA dashboard. Legacy data, so data kind of dating back before 2016, um, is available at the link provided on the slide. And in order to access data or even request if there is um, 
a possibility of accessing data from unavailable academic years or to request unsuppressed data, um, there is a link here to submit a data request um, and that goes to our main DOE help desk and they'll work with our assessment team business analyst um, to fulfill that request. So preparing for the 24-25 Maine educational assessments, before we jump in, starting with Maine through year, just a couple of more general updates. So our assessment security resources are now available on the website. So we have posted our assessment security training video. This is for both district and school assessment coordinators. The assessment security handbook is currently um, in the approval process um, for posting to our main DOE website. We anticipate that being available beginning tomorrow on our assessment security webpage. For assessment administrators slash proctors, um, we have the assessment security overview training, which is a five minute um, video that can be accessed asynchronously, as well as assessment irregularities, what now security training webisode, which is another additional three minutes. All staff involved in the administration of Maine educational assessments must sign the security and data privacy agreement, which is found in our assessment security handbook. Those signed copies must be maintained um, at the SAU level throughout the school year. Um, it is something that we may ask for in the event there is an assessment irregularity. It also relates, um, it covers disclaimers around um, FERPA and student, student information. I think I saw a question pop up in the chat that I can address quickly related to the 23-24 um, assessment results. So those are currently in post-validation um, with our data team. And I believe we have an accountability meeting coming up later this week, Keith. Um, so I'm happy to provide hopefully a more concrete date for you after we have that meeting. Also being updated for this year, the main comprehensive assessment system guidelines. So the MECAS guidelines, just as a reminder, or as new information, they include our federal and state assessment requirements, enrollment and participation requirements, including unique enrollment, such as a student who may be partially homeschooled or a student who may be attending out of district. Um, it also includes information about participation um, exceptions. There are a couple of cases where that happens. Um, and just as a reminder, the student assessment rosters are created from Synergy. So all of the enrollment data that goes into Synergy is what later um, gets added to the assessment roster. And so it's, it's vitally important, important that that information is getting into Synergy as soon as possible, especially because we do have a three-year assessment with a fall administration window. Um, and it's equally as important that the data is accurate, for example, that students are enrolled in the correct grade level via Synergy to ensure that they are assigned the correct um, test form for their grade. And now we're gonna move into some updates around our main through your assessment. Hi everyone, I'm Krista Averill. So first I wanna to touch upon spring 24 RIT scores. Uh, you may have received some communications from me in mid-July and again earlier this month um, or have seen them on our website. So just providing some background information for you is that the spring administration of the main through year assessment does produce two different score types. And so we have our main scale score. That's the one a chat aligned to an achievement level of well below, below, at, or above state expectations. And that's the one used for federal and state accountability, which will appear in the ESSA dashboard. And then we also have RIT scores. So those are those norm reference scores used for making comparisons, either between students or comparing a student's progress at one point in time to another point in time, or in other words, their growth. And that's used in the state's ESSA plan as one identifier for schools receiving additional support. So all questions on the spring assessment contribute to that RIT score but only some questions contribute to the main scale score. And the reason I mention that is because it is possible for there to be differences between the two score types in their classification of student achievement, their precision and accuracy, as well as their score validity. Next slide, please. So based on observations and feedback from educators and administrators from multiple main SAUs regarding RIT scores specifically, 
Main DOE did request that NWEA complete additional data validation analyses before the release of the finalized score data via the student score data file. And at this time, those scores continue to be delayed. These concerns are limited to RIT scores. And so that main scale score, that information has already been um, provided by NWEA. That's already in the process of being loaded for the ESSA dashboard. These concerns are limited solely to RIT. So at this time, more information will become available very soon. We had some new information this morning and we're working on finalizing some communications for you. I do realize that some schools may have distributed RIT score results via a math growth report or perhaps via the dynamic student report in Acacia or other means. As a reminder, even if you did distribute RIT score information in a different method earlier, all schools are still required to distribute the individual student reports to families when they become available. Um, and so because it's truly the main scale score that is federally required to be reported to families. So right now, we cannot answer the question of timeline quite yet because we are in that process of finalizing that communication. So I can't provide you with a specific date at this time. I should be able to later this week for sure. And there's another question about issuing a letter to accompany ISRs with an explanation on what parents will see. So we do already have a supplemental page. We're looking at if any changes need to be made to that page moving forward. Um, if any changes need to be made to ISRs, those sorts of things. And we will get that information to you as soon as we have it. But if there are any changes that need to be made, that will include communications from the DOE to those who would be seeing those changes. Next slide, please. So looking ahead to this academic year, we do have a required fall administration coming up very soon on September 16th. It is six weeks. We also have a six week optional winter administration in January and February and a six week required spring administration from April 14th to May 30th. So that is actually seven weeks, but the spring administration will be closed April 21st through 25th for spring break. So preparing for the fall administration, the new state solution secure browser is available for download at the NWEA State Solution Secure Browser webpage. You will need to download a new version for the fall administration. Um, there have been updates made, improvements, and certainly in terms of Apple products. And then the 2425 system and technology guide is also now available. For rostering, Acacia will open for your pre-administration activities. That's creating managed online testing groups, creating reporting groups, and applying supports and accommodations on September 3rd. I do wanna note, however, that no student will appear in Acacia until that student appears in Synergy. So it is the, responsible of the responsibility of the SAU or school to ensure that students are enrolled in Synergy before the first day of their local administration schedule. Next slide, please. So for district and school assessment coordinator training for the fall administration, Jody touched upon the MEA security training. So there is a training video that's about 11 minutes. I just wanna note that that training video is replacing the synchronous security training that we have had in the past. So we will not be hosting an assessment security webinar. We of course will answer your questions at office hours and whenever you have them through whatever means you communicate them, but there will not be a standalone assessment security webinar. That training video will fill that purpose. And then of course, reviewing the handbook and signing the security and data privacy agreement in appendix A of the handbook. There's also a new main through your assessment coordinator training module. This replaces the 90 minute assessment coordinator training that used to occur in both the fall and spring. NWEA is expected to share the module directly with DACs by August 26th. They are using the NEO contact list. So if an individual is identified as the DAC in NEO, they will receive that. We do ask that you complete that prior to your local administration of the fall main through your assessment and that you keep a copy of your module completion certificate on file throughout the school year in case it needs to be requested by main DOE. That module can be completed 
at different times. You can start it and then complete it at a different time. You don't need to do it all at once. So that allows you more flexibility than we previously had with that 90 minute meeting. Proctors have slightly different training requirements. So they do need to watch the two security webinars that Jody had mentioned previously, as well as sign the security and data privacy agreement. And proctors do have a nine minute training video. Proctors do not watch the assessment security training video that you watch as coordinators. They have a separate training video that's nine minutes long. Our fall 24 manuals and guides are in their final review cycle. And WEA is applying some final edits that have been requested and they will become available on NWEA's webpage later this month. We also have an opportunity coming up for a high school content and bias review. So participants in this content and bias review would be educators or school SAU administrators with experience in high school math and or reading instruction or curriculum. And the purpose is to review potential questions for the assessment to ensure that the material is appropriate, free of bias and aligned to means accountability standards. So these are questions that students have not yet seen and we are determining if they are appropriate to be included on the through year assessment in the future. The dates for that are October 22nd through 24th in the evenings from four to seven. It is a virtual meeting. The link will be provided by NWEA and there is a stipend provided of $100 for each virtual evening session and $225 for completion of pre-work. If you're interested, there is a link there to the registration form. Um, NWEA will be reaching out to participants to let them know if they've been selected or perhaps placed on um, a list of individuals to be selected in case someone can't participate. And if you are not selected, you should still receive an email from NWEA. So everyone will be responded to if they complete that form. Next slide, please. And we do have some new NWEA professional learning opportunities for 2024-25. We are revamping our NWEA PL for this year. So there's two major changes. One is there's a reduction in the number of sessions that we're offering. So each session will be offered two times throughout the year. And we are also introducing three new professional learning series. So there's balanced assessment systems for leaders and you can see the four sessions there student-centered assessment literacy, and applying classroom assessment standards. Next slide, please. So specifically in fall of 24, sessions one and session two of balanced assessment systems for leaders will be available, as well as one iteration of both sessions for student-centered assessment literacy. In addition, last year we offered using achievement level descriptors to ensure classroom rigor, we are having one session of that this fall and an additional session later this year. And then last year we had a session titled using multiple data sources to inform instruction that has been retitled by NWEA to triangulating data for instructional insights. And we have one session this fall and another session later this year. I just wanna note that attendance at session one is not necessary for attendance at session two. Although they do build upon each other, they also do have distinct content. And for whom you contact, so any problems related to technology, whether that's the Acacia platform, the Secure Browser, or MARC, which is the MathWorks platform, NWEA main partner support is your go-to. For any issues with your rosters in NEO, please contact main DOE Medem's help desk. And for everything else, questions related to content, accessibility, scoring, reporting, or policy, please reach out to me. If you do have a student who's on your assessment roster in NEO, but not in Acacia, please reach out to me, but please also wait at least 36 hours after making the update in Synergy. Our updates to the Acacia platform are manual, and if there are any errors that arise in that process, it does take additional time. So we appreciate your patience and your waiting for that 36 hours. If you have any problems that NWEA main partner support or Medem's help desk cannot resolve, please reach out to me via phone or email. And if it is related to an issue for NWEA partner support, please provide me with the case number so I can follow up with them internally. And moving to the main science assessment. So reporting for spring 24, 
should be available in the kite reporting platform. We anticipate this to be available in mid October. And looking ahead to spring 25, we do have a series of changes coming up for this assessment. Some of them are fairly significant. So for all grade levels, 5, 8 in high school, we are removing session four, which was the student questionnaire. So session four was not um, a test of students science content knowledge, and it was not used for scoring or participation calculations, and we have removed it. For high school only, we are looking at a reduction in time for each session. So it was previously 60 minutes and it will now be 50 minutes each. I do want to note that there's no change in the number of questions or the amount of content for the assessment for high school. Simply what we found by looking back at spring 22 and 23 data is that nearly all high school students without the designated support of extended time completed each session within 50 minutes with very, very few exceptions. If you do have concerns that you're, you have a student who would not be able to finish within 50 minutes, if they're provided the opportunity for extended time in the classroom, please provide them that opportunity on the assessment. Grades five and eight, however, did not reflect the same pattern for spring 22 and spring 23, and those sessions will remain at 60 minutes. There's also been a change in our administration schedule. We are moving up high school to be before April break so that there is no overlap at all with AP exams. So we're hoping that that provides you the flexibility you need. Grades five and eight, however, will remain in mid-May to allow educators at those grade levels additional time to teach as much of the grade level content as they can before the administration. And I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Lewis. Okay, so uh, in the national international assessment world, uh, Maine's has a very minimal fit footprint this year. Uh, go move ahead, please. Um, just want to keep you in touch and you know in touch with what's happening in the NAEP world, so that when we come around to the next large administration, that you all are up to snuff. Um, so we do have a data release coming in February 2025. The this is very purposeful so that the the data is not going to impact um, the election and the election will not be used against the assessment data and results. So um, and I believe that it you'll find that it's even off after the inauguration, which I think is very late, but um, it is what it is. I'm trying to reduce the politics. And okay, so I and on to the transition to school devices. Uh, this year, there's a very large field study, and then um, they hope to have as many school devices on board or use, be utilizing those in 2026. I know for a large number of main schools that will not be taking place because the the platform is not prepared to use any iPads or any Mac devices. Go ahead, please. So just as a little overview and a reminder of the transition that's taking place with the technology and how NAEP is utilizing the school Wi-Fi and eventually student devices, um, go ahead. And this is, a brief overview of the all the assessments that are happening happening across the country with NAEP and and I believe in none of you are involved with, with any of these so you can take a big breather and focus on the state assessments and the, okay go ahead and I'm passing it on to Michelle thank thank you all right so we're going to talk about uh, the access and alternate access assessment we can move on to the next slide just some upcoming dates that I wanted to point out for you. If you had any students in your school that participated in the alternate access this past school year, those reports are going to be available online September 13th and available in printed format on October 2nd. Just a point out here, the dates for this year's access and alternate access are January 6th through February 28th. We have some upcoming professional development opportunities this year. So I just wanted to list these out here for you. We're gonna do an overview of access uh, for MLs. Basically, this is 
focused on new test coordinators, but any test coordinators are welcome to this. That one's going to be on October 21st. We'll do an alternate access for MLs and an overview of that on October 28th and accessibility features and accommodations on December 2nd. Also wanted to just point out that on the WIDA website, all main pre-K through 12 educators have free unlimited access to some self-paced course workshops that are offer relevant practical content that build capacity in supporting multilingual learners. You do need to have the secure portal account for that, but it's easy to get set up. You can talk to your test coordinator or reach out to me if, if your test coordinator has questions. We're also going to be providing some virtual facilitated virtual workshops through WIDA. There's going to be one on planning with the WIDA ELD standards in October and another one when language and disabilities meet. So planning and instruction to support multilingual learners who are duly identified. That's going to be in December. There will be more information coming out on those, but I just wanted to put those on your radar for now. We can move to the next slide. Just some information here, the basic contact information, kind of like Krista shared, only for the access, so who to reach out to, whether it needs to be the we to help or the data recognition or whether you reach out directly to me. So that information is right here. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions. All right, the MSAA, so for our students that need the alternate assessment, we're going to share some information on that next. The alternate assessment reports, emails have gone out. I know that many districts have already printed those out and got that all set, but just a reminder that those reports are available. They were available beginning in July and they'll be available until September 9th. So make sure that all of the student results are reports are printed out and you have access to those. Uh, test coordinators do need their MSAA login information in order to access and download the reports. If you have questions, if you have not printed those out yet, please, please reach out to me. We can make sure you are set up to be able to do that. Um, and just a reminder, that oftentimes the special education directors have those. If that's changed and you need anything new set up, please make sure that that's taken care of. Parent guides are also available. Those are available. There's a link for that there. They're available in the main DOE assessment reports tab. They provide some information. They, they're not very long documents. They're, they are a few pages long and they provide the family with um, information on an overview of the assessment, the importance of academic instruction, potential instructional supports, ideas for collaboration between families and teachers. They're available by grade level. The beginning of them is just basic and overall information, but then they delve a little bit into specific information based on the individual students' grades. We also, um, we had at a training that we had earlier this month, the webinar, we had a somebody reach, you know, recommend that there might be beneficial to have a one-page resource for schools to have. So we're working on getting that for you. And when that is ready, we will put that out. Next slide. We've got some upcoming training opportunities for the MSAA as well. We're going to be doing a 1%, just an overview of the alternate assessment. That's going to be September 19th. And then we're going to get it, do some practical applications and intended uses of data. We actually did one of that, one of those already that was geared more towards directors, administrators. This one's going to be uh, very similar, but a little bit more geared towards teachers and how teachers can use the data from the student reports to help them. That's going to be on September 26th. And then as it gets closer, a little bit closer to the administration window, we'll do an alternate assessment coordinator training in November, and then a MSA training for alternate assessment for test administrators in January. Here's the contact information for the MSAA live chat, and as well as my information again, as the window gets closer for that, that information will be helpful for you. And then I believe we're turning this back over to Krista or Jody. That would be me. Krista, thank you. Yeah, next slide please, Daniela. So we, the Department of Education is hosting a series of meetings across the state of Maine um, to measure what matters most to you 
in the success of mean schools. I recently attended one as a community member rather than as a main DOE member. And there were some really fantastic conversations that were had around what mattered to individuals. Participants at these meetings range from administrators at the school and SAU level to educators. We had a representative from a local college as well as families attending as well. So great conversations to be had. We encourage you to share this information with others. If you could go to the next slide, please. So here are the dates for the remaining upcoming sessions around the state. And there is a registration link there to sign up. Um, please share that link with others. And if you have the opportunity, we welcome you to come. There will be a follow-up virtual session reflecting on all of the different conversation points from these conversations all around the state of Maine and all of the registrants for um, the in-person dates and locations will be invited to that virtual session as well. So I do recommend that. Next slide. And with that, we will open it up to Q&A.